Today we'll talk about the chassis, more precisely about the shock absorbers. The chassis actually includes everything that connects the scooter to the road. That means wheels, steering columns, suspension and the shock absorbers. Today, there are a whole bunch of different shock absorbers on the market that have different features for different prices. But there are also more and more shock absorbers that offer a lot of adjustment possibilities for reasonable prices. We'll deal with that today to create a little bit of clarification. Let's start with the very basics. Why do we need a shock absorber and how is it constructed? Basically, it consists of two basic parts, a spring and a damper. On some Vespa Oldie models and also on Lambrata models, dampers and springs are separate. The function remains the same though. What is the spring used for? It allows a flexible wheel suspension and thus some driving comfort. It also enables the wheel to always maintain road contact, even on uneven ground. What is the damper used for? Modern shock absorbers have a few tasks in a chassis, but more on that later. Still, the most important task is to dampen the spring movement of the shock and the chassis. I have prepared something for you to illustrate this. I have a little Vespa steering column here. And here I have drawn a road with a somewhat unusual obstacle that could be a curb. It's of course extremely exaggerated, but of course this is for illustrative purposes only. The scooter is now approaching, drives against the obstacle and, as I said, the spring has the task of keeping the scooter steady. It compresses and the scooter keeps on driving. But as you can see, there is now tension on the spring and when this tension is released, the frame flips upwards and the road contact becomes poor. Besides, it's very annoying. Now I install a shock absorber and drive this way again. It compresses and now the damper has the task of absorbing the energy and ensuring that the shock absorber slowly rebounds the spring. Maybe I can show you back there what it looks like in extreme cases. I have a Lambretta here and this model originally came with no front damper. I've already started converting it though. The brackets are already installed, but there are still no dampers and the whole thing looks like this. It really jumps up and down and of course while driving it is very unsteady. During a bounce, the tire could even leave the road on rough surfaces. Now, I'd like to explain in more detail how such a shock absorber is constructed. First of all, I have a very simple shock absorber here. It's an original replacement and you can clearly see that the spring is installed on the outside. The damper cartridge is on the inside. That's the basic structure. Then, there is a slightly more complex shock absorber here. It allows adjustment for the spring preload and comes also with a rebound adjustment up here. Other models also have an external expansion tank and a pressure level adjustment, all the way up to the real racing models. The main difference for the racing models is that this pressure state adjustment exists twice one for high speed and one for low speed. How that all works and what it means, that we'll take a look at later. I would like to explain to you very briefly how such a shock absorber is built so that it can work this way. This is relatively interesting for understanding how your chassis works. There are of course a million ways in which such shock absorbers are constructed 
but the adjustable shock absorbers or adjustable shock absorbers that are available nowadays for classic scooter models are relatively similar in terms of size and basic construction. Mostly, they have the same basic principle. This is the damper cartridge. This is the eye where it's attached to the frame. Here is the upper frame connection and then the piston rod. There is a plate with walls in here and there is oil in here, above and below this plate. Then there is another kind of cork, a movable cork or piston which is usually called a separator. And below that is gas, mostly nitrogen. Usually the spring is around the damper on the outside. When the shock absorber compresses, then this plate moves downwards and the oil has to go through the holes in this plate. The same thing happens the other way around, of course. When the strut rebounds, this plate moves up and the oil that is in here moves down there. So why is this gas down here? When the piston rod moves in here, it takes up a lot of volume, which is normally in the damper cartridge. To compensate that, there is this small chamber down here, which is filled with gas. That means the piston rod moves in here, the space in here is used, and the gas is compressed. That is also the reason why there is such a slight effect. As I said, it should dampen and not bounce. If I squeeze it, then it enlarges by itself. This is because the gas is compressed down here and it gives an effect that makes it rebound. In this video we dealt with the basics, how a shock absorber is built and which adjustment options exist. Next time, we want to see what it really looks like on the vehicle and how to set it best for your chassis to work properly. If you are interested in how this works, subscribe to the channel, press the bell, and I'll see you next time. Bye!